Welcome back to the table. Today, Emily and I are going to do something a little bit different. We're going to give you a tour. Ooh, tour guides. Of Marrakesh. We're not going to give you a full review, although she and I have played this a couple times now, and um, we like it yes. a lot. <laughs> uh, so that's our short review. But this isn't a review because we've only played it at two player, mm -hmm. and we do want to get a lot more plays in before we give you a review. Although our hunch is that we're still going to like it, uh, we are going to get it played this weekend with more players. But, like I said, we want to give you a tour of the game. This is going to give you a really good idea of what the game is doing, just shy of giving you a complete how to play. Just shy. Just probably just shy. <laughs> I'm going to give you a brief overview of the structure of the game and how it flows. But then we're really going to dig in on all the things on the player board. Which are huge, massive <laughs> player boards. The player boards are huge. There's, I want to say there's like nine different areas here um, that relate to all of these colorful pieces, which are called keshis. Those are going to power all of these different areas on your player board. And some, if not most of those uh, areas, are going to interact with things on the main board. Tracks that you go up, scrolls you can buy, luxury goods that you can buy, city gates that you can build, all these sorts of things. Lots of stuff. Uh, and of course, we can't deny or ignore the elephant in the room here, which is the tower. Tower. Uh, in fact, take a look at everything on the board here. We've got these massive player boards. We've got the main board with all those things I just mentioned. We've got all the Keshis, which they call them, which is short for someone from Marrakesh. And this is just a game term, by the way. That is not a real term. Okay, I won't use it, it outside is, the game. <laughs> no, do not use that outside the game. It is just literally for this game. We've got our three main resources, which are water, dates, and coin or diner in this uh, case. And then this tower. This tower works kind of Shogun style because we're going to be selecting these Keshi behind our screen. We have 12, one of each color, and then they're going to be dumped in here and they're going to come out. Now this tower doesn't let everything out necessarily. Sometimes True. it will, sometimes it won't. But you're going to drop some, some will get stuck, and then we're going to go through a phase where we claim those Keshi and put them out on our board. The interesting thing about when you put the Keshi in is depending on what colors you choose, that's where you're going to put your assistance on your player board. And it's going to be in one of the corresponding spaces because that's going to be the area you activate during your turn. And this is really what we're going to spend most of the time in this video telling you about is what all of those areas do when you activate them. But when you take Keshi from the middle too, you don't have to choose just the ones where your assistants are, which is great thing about it. Like that tower really can vary how much comes out. You could get just two, even though you put in six. <laughs> right. Or you could get eight because the ones from last round are coming out all the time this round. And when you're putting them there, sometimes things come out that you don't have assistance at, which seems like, oh no, now I'm not gonna activate it. But really it's great because in a season, and there are three seasons, you're gonna act. You're gonna end up putting everybody in. Yeah. So you'll end up activating all of your regions at some point, and it's forcing you to do a little bit of everything based on what you're taking from the tower. Yeah. So long story short, the assistants, these three right here, are what you're going to be activating on any given round. There are four rounds in each of the three seasons, so you're going to do that twelve times total in the game. Yep. The keshi are what's powering effectively mm -hmm. all of those areas. So the more Keshi you have in an area, generally speaking, the, the more you're going to be able to do with it, or maybe the more flexibility you'll have by using that area. So you're going to put the Keshi in, you're going to claim the Keshi, then you're going to each use your assistant, and then at the end of every round, you're going to take a look at the river here, which is related to one of the areas, and see if you've crossed some of these rapids, at which point you're able to claim some bonuses at the end of each round. Yep. You're going to do that to the end of the season, three times, and that's the end of the game. Now, that made it sound really simple, but there's a lot more to it. You're gonna be collecting a lot of things off this board. So let's start by taking a tour of the player board, and I'm gonna start with that part that I love in all of my plays so far. He really does. <laughs> it's, it's the river. So up in the right-hand corner of the, your player board is the river. Now the river is gonna do one of a couple things. And in fact, let's get this out of the way. The one thing you can do when you activate any of these sections if you don't activate it for its power, is just simply take your assistant from that space, and instead of activating, you simply add another Keshi to it. Yep. Like Emily was just saying, sometimes you don't get the Keshi you want from the Middle. draft, if you will. So you might go, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna get another Keshi. That way, the next time, in the next turn or the next round that you activate that space, it's just gonna be that much stronger. Right. So if you're not doing that and you activate the river, you're simply going to count the number of Keshi you have 
and move the corresponding number of spaces up the river. Mm -hmm. The cool thing is, even if you have a couple Keshi and say I move one, two, and I haven't crossed that rapid, whenever you move up the river, you can spend water, which is one of the resources, to move additional spaces for each water you spend. Yep. So you can move up quite a ways if you've done things to collect a lot of, a lot of water throughout the game. And the river is great too because it's every time, every round, we're going to look at who's the furthest and you're going to get those bonus whatever you passed on the rapids. But remember, there's four rounds in a season. Yeah. So you're staying, if you do that first round, you're staying up there and still getting those bonuses time after time after time until we reset next season. Yeah, and not to mention, at the end of the season, there's a really significant river Juicy evaluation. Bonus. It doesn't have as much to do with these rapids, but it has everything to do with who's furthest on the track and whoever's furthest on the track is going to get this tile. There's a bunch of different river tiles like that, but it's usually some significant power that you can do. And you're only going to be doing that if you are the furthest on the river. So that's sort of the biggest thing and why you want to move up that river. And it's why it's made me move up she every just time. Always I moves up the it, river. it is my <laughs> it is my core philosophy in this game. Now I probably will learn that you don't have to do that, but depending on what those powers are, you might want to go up that river. Another thing I saw you do last game, though, is you went to the green spot. So you went to the plantation, yes. which is where you get dates. And this is probably the easiest section, right? You All you're doing is that when you place a Keshi here, you immediately get a victory point. So yeah. immediately you move up your marker. And then once you have your assistant here, you can, like we said, add another Keshi, so get another victory point. Or if you activate the zone, you'll just get dates according to how many, many Keshis you have in here. So up to a total of eight dates at once, which you did at the end of one yeah. of our games. And you were just like, bring me all the dates. It was kind of a weird feeling because there's a lot of times where you don't feel like you need eight dates. Sure. But at the end of the game, there is some points you're gonna get for all of your resources divided by two. So it actually worked out for some points. And it wouldn't be bad to do that early on if you had enough Keshi to just get enough dates to do all the things you need to do. Yeah. One of those things that you need to do that we didn't talk about and we'll back into this are these provision tiles. At the beginning of the game, everyone's gonna get three provision tiles, one for the end of each season. Now, you don't just have to pay these provision tiles one nice. and done. You pay one, and then at the end of season two, you have to pay that one plus, plus another one. one. And this end of season three, it's all cumulative. Yeah. So you have to pay a combination of water, denier, and dates. Uh, dates. And at the end of the game, you're paying quite a bit. So right. you need to plan for that. And you could potentially lose up to 12 points at the end of the game if you yeah. can't do all of that. So the date field is definitely one of those ways where you're going to start getting a lot of resources and help you get there. Yeah, the next area, in fact, the next two areas I'm going to talk about is the mosque and the palace. This is this black section and this white section right here. Now these are related back to the main board as well. Again, you can use these and use your assistant to get more Keshi there, but if you're not and you're activating them, you're simply going up the corresponding track. The white one is the palace track, the black one is the mosque track. When you go up this, there's a couple different reasons you're gonna to wanna to do this. One, if you get up really high, you may be able to tap off the top for some more points, but that is a lofty goal. The more significant thing is to cross these thresholds here. And you'll see each threshold has a denier attached to it, but also you see all these beautiful Euro-y lines. It looks like you're solving crimes in the middle. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Between both tracks, there's these lines so that once you move up past a threshold, when you do that, you'll immediately look at the line connecting where the person you have placed or the pawn you have placed in the palace is connected to the section in the mosque and get any one of the bonuses along that line. So as you move up, you'll see there's different lines. Here I could get five points, a yellow, gray, or a blue Keshi, or one denier. So it's a really interesting thing that you can use and sort of stagger your movement up mm -hmm. each. Again, this all depends on how many Keshi you're getting in all these areas, because if you think by the end of the game you're gonna have all of these areas filled with Keshi, no. you are wrong. <laughs> um, but if you're going up these tracks, it would probably be wise to put you know, some effort in both the mosque and the palace. Right, right. Another way you can get more resources or kind of some cool stuff is the marketplace or the Gemma Alphana. Gemma Alphana. Okay, and that is the pink spot down here in your player board. So you notice it has a bunch of different resources and things you can get. This is also one where when you place a Keshi, you immediately get that thing times one of its value. So in this square, I can get one of the Keshis to go in the souk. Um, or I can go up the river, or I can get a date, just basically a whole bunch of different stuff I can get. The cool thing is when you actually activate this zone, you'll choose one that already has a Keshi, and you will multiply it by the value of the entertainers in the middle. 
Um, and before you even do that, you will make sure to rotate this one spot. Yeah, you have to remember that because when you set up the game, you choose how you want to place that. So you never want to put your three entertainers on the first spot that you want. You want right. to put them one, one away. counterclockwise to that space so that you can tap that and you get three of those things or two or one. Sure, sure. And they're also kind of different. So mine and David's aren't exactly laid out the same. So we're not going to be playing exactly the same game. But if you can end up getting all of these throughout the game, you're getting a lot of bonuses. And when you activate it, you're getting to choose basically which resource you want at that time and what kind of you know value you want to assign with it. Yeah, there's really some interesting things you can do here and in a lot of the places, but here in particular, when you're using your assistants, you're taking them off one at a time and using them in any order you want. So I could use the Gemma Alpha Knob before I use another section, and that could give me those Keshi that I need exactly. or the money that I need to do the action a right. little bit better in that other section. Now, one of the next sections here is the Souk, like Emily just mentioned. The Souk is a very interesting place. It has three spaces for Keshis, and they're not individual spaces. So you're going to be putting orange, yellow, and purple Keshis here. You'll also notice here the section that you place your assistants in has space for three because you can put all three there. Remember when we talked about sort of taking three Keshi out at the beginning and revealing them and that dictating where you put your assistants? If I have my yellow, orange, and purple, Everybody's all going to the souk. of my assistants are going to the souk, so I'm able to activate it three times. It is kind of unique in that respect. There is one other way to activate other sections more than once in a round, but really this is going to be the section where you're most likely able to do that. So what are you doing in the souk? Well, this is the marketplace. It's going to let you interact with this section down here. You'll see a couple things. One, there's a stack of three tiles, one for each season. This is the exchange office. This allows you for one assistant to activate the exchange office and trade in either one yellow, one purple, or one orange for the corresponding resources. It's going to generally give you coins, dates, or water, yeah. or some combination therein. The other thing you can do is if you've actually activated the souk or collected Keshi to the point where you have maybe two purple, two orange, and yellow, I can actually acquire a luxury good for an assistant. So if I activate it there and have the corresponding Keshi, I'll trade those in and take this necklace that's worth 13 points. Or again, like we said, you might take this vase here for two yellow. It's going to only give you four points, but it's going to give you two denier, which you can use somewhere else, maybe on another activation. So that is generally what you're going to be doing with the souk. And like I said, it is unique because it has all those different Keshi and a place for those three assistants. And this is the only time really that the Keshi come off the board. So yes. you're not just like piling them up trying to get to 10. That is you're true. You're taking them off every time you spend them, but it's a huge way to get some points or resources when you need them. Yeah, that is important. It is important to note that all the other sections when you put Keshi in there, except for some very edge cases sure. and powers, those Keshi are where they are and they're not gonna be moving right. for the rest of the game. Yep. The next one we have is the gray, which is the madrasa, which is where we're going to get the scholars to give us some scrolls. Yeah. And read this as rule-breaking abilities. Yes. <laughs> so we love it. Depending on the number of Keshis you have in here, you'll be able to get scrolls up to that number. So if I had, you know, four Keshis in here, that means I could maybe get a three and a one, or I could buy all of the ones. I can't buy four ones, though. No. Because when I take something, it does not reveal the next thing until the end of my turn. Right. So I only can see what's at the top. There is a little bit of mitigation with that in that before I take any, I can spend a dinar to put the top ones all in the bottom, but that commits me to at least taking one of them. Um, but it allows me to see a little bit more of what's out there and what I could get. Yeah, and speaking of what's out there, these are some delightfully Euro powers that you can do. This is akin to sort of the variable powers that you might get at the beginning of some other games like yeah. uh, Voyages of Marco Polo or something like that. Some of these are going to come out at the beginning of the game and you're going to look through them and they have this whole booklet that gives you a full description full of rundown. every single tile in this entire game. And you're going to look at some of these powers and some of them are fairly straightforward. You'll see this one right here. Simply, when you take it, it only costs one date, and you only have to have one gray guy in the madrasa. And you're going to be able to add a gray guy to the madrasa. So a lot of these are going to give you instant extra keshis on your board, which is never a bad thing. Love new keshis. It is fantastic. Some of them are going to give you some resources. Some of you are going to give some ongoing powers. Like this one here allows you, it, the infinity sign says it's going to happen every time. Every time you go up past a threshold, not only are you going to get the dinar, 
and activate the bonus. But this one suggests that you also get to move up the river. Yeah. So there's some combo-y titles here. And they get m even more interesting up Much here. Much juicier when you get to the fives and the sevens. But yeah, I think I had that in one game. And I had another one that was like, when you passed a rapid on the river, you get that yeah. bonus immediately. So you can start to kind of combo these things together too and say like, ooh, this is for the marketplace. And when I do the marketplace, I get to take an extra action. Oh, and that lets me do the marketplace twice whenever I do it. Yeah. You start comboing them just to find these really great combinations of how you make your engine sing. Yeah, when I played with Elisha, she actually got this one, but she got at least one other one, if not two, so th that were just like this, that gave her different things. So it oh, gave her up. an extra dinar when she crossed a threshold. She went up the river when she crossed a threshold. So it gave her a built-in reason to go really heavy with the mosque and the palace. So yeah. she'd go up, and she did. She got all the way to the top of wow. both of those, which is a significant accomplishment. Um, now, the strategy and how you do that is something you want to think about because you don't necessarily <laughs> want to edge both of them up equally at the same time. Right. Sometimes you might want to take one all the way up. Stagger Because if little. you do, every time you move this guy up and this one's here, you could trigger the bonus for seven points That's every nice. time. So it's a really interesting thing. And these are just some of the areas in the game. Now, the next area is the Sahara. The Sahara is the desert. This is the end of game uh, point scoring tiles that you can acquire. Now, this isn't as simple as here are your end game scoring tiles at the beginning of the game and you know what they are. <laughs> They're all face down. These six tiles right here are face down, so you don't know what they are. When you go here, again, if you're not just adding another Keshi, you're going to activate this section in a very interesting way. Any of the Keshi that you've added are going to flip these tiles over. And when you flip these tiles over, they are accessible to acquire. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a Keshi next to them, and when you go here, you simply pay this amount to acquire those tiles. So yep. if I had both of these tiles uncovered, I could simply activate this and spend two dinar and take both of these end game tiles. Here's the cool thing. Not only is that going to give you potential end of game scoring for whatever those tiles do, and there are a lot of them, uh, but they're going to go right up here on this board that's above your player board from left to right, triggering bonuses. The first of which you can see here is another Keshi. Great. All the players are going to get three random Keshi at the beginning of the game in these spots, in a two-player game anyway. In multiplayer game, it's only two of them. But then there's also these bonuses that allow you to do things all the way up to getting seven points. But these are going to be things that you can trigger as you uncover them. So you have some incentive, unlike other games, to really sort of hit those end-of-game tiles yep. early so that you can get these things to make the most of those bonuses. Instead of just waiting towards the end, it's like, oh, I better get my end of game scoring tiles. You want to want to get those because there's a really good reason to get some of these Keshi on your board. Definitely. And you're only scoring three of the end of game tiles at the end of the game, but there's space for six and you might go for all six just because like these bonus effects that you're getting as you're laying them out there can be pretty great. Plus, as you're revealing more, you might say, oh, I had you know this one I got first, which said if I moved my guy all the way to the top of the palace, I would get seven points. But actually, this one that I've now uncovered says three points plus one for every white Keshi. And I have a ton of white Keshis. Yeah. This is way more points. I got to make some time to get this out here to the end game scoring. So you do have to start from the bottom going up, which is nice because it costs more at the top. And then there's also another option. Yes. You can put your Keshis down here in this little oasis. Um, the first one's going to give you two of any resource. Um, and then the other one's going to give you two points. Now... We've talked about putting Keshi on the board. We've talked about activating all the spaces on the board. There is one more space we want to talk about, but before we get to that, I wanted to talk about the Keshi and how they interact with the end of game scoring. Because every one of these sections we've talked about, plus the one we haven't yet, <laughs> is going to give you 10 points if you've filled it with Keshi. Now, we've talked about all the different colored Keshi except for one. There is a red Keshi. And if you've noticed in the player board, there's all these red spots yep. in most of the areas. To score the 10 points, you not only have to have all of the, the Keshi of its corresponding color, but you also have to have that red Keshi. It's going to get you 10 points. Now, when we've played, I think the most I've seen is someone's got three sections. Yeah, I've only gotten a couple. I've only gotten two. I think Alicia got three one time. She really focused, like I said, she was getting that white and yeah. the black, so those were guaranteed done. Uh, I think when you played, you got the pink I got done. the pink and I got the desert, the oasis is... And we didn't talk about some of these tiles, but there's a lot of tiles in this game. They're going to sort of push you in certain directions. There are a lot of tiles in here in the scrolls 
they are going to give you some really unique and interesting benefits with the, uh, the market, market square. In fact, there's one right here. Uh, if you remember, Emily mentioned the entertainers giving you that number of whatever research you're taking. If you have this tile, it's plus one. So instead of oh, one, two, one. or three, it's two, three, or four, which is going to absolutely make you want to use that section as much as possible. Mm -hmm. The other thing that the red cache does in addition to that endgame scoring and locking those spaces down is when you reveal the red cache, you don't have a red area to put your assistant. Yep. It's a wild. So when you reveal your red cache, you're able to take that assistant and put it in any section that you want, including a section you've already used that round or that season, mm -hmm. which is the only other way that you can utilize, say, the river twice. So if you really want to go far up that river, if you have a lot of cache and you hit that twice, you're going to go up here and get some of these high points at the end and potentially position yourself so you right. can get that tile as well. Now, I did mention there was one other section, and it's called the Medina. The Medina is sort of this path that goes around the palace and kind of connects to all of the different areas. Now, it really only connects to them visually, but what this does is this holds all of these city gates. When you use the Medina, you're going to take any of the beige cache that you have here in the tower, and you're going to place them in one of them at a time in these gate sections. But as you do that, you're able to buy these gates. In fact, you must buy these gates. <laughs> There's these four sections up here, and it's gonna cost anywhere from zero to three dinar. But as you can see, as you go up, instead of losing points down here for the free ones, you're getting a lot of points for the ones that cost three. These are randomly put out here, and when you buy one, you're going to take it, and you don't have to put it in the corresponding place. But if you do, it's gonna be worth a couple points. Which is nice. The really nice thing, though, is when you take one of these, you're also going to get a cache of that color. Yep. So if you want to get the right color and put it in the right space for those two points, fantastic. But if you really want to get those extra blue cache that you need to finish the river, you could just go from get the blue ones. And you've got two here and there's one here. There's only three of each city gate, so you yep. get them while they last. But you can do that denying yourself of those two points, but getting more and more blue cache so you can fill that area in, not only for the end game scoring points, but also to make that more powerful for the rest Keep of the game. Keep going with that engine, yep, definitely. So that is generally the tour of what you're doing <laughs> on your player board. Again, you're going to do that, and on your turn, use your three assistants in player order, then the next player uses all three of their assistants. You're gonna do this round after round, season after season, collecting all of these, all of these things, scoring these points for luxuries, goods, Scoring points all throughout the game. Right. And then getting a fair amount of endgame scoring points depending on what endgame tokens you've revealed you from your Oasis. And then finally, some points, not too many, from all of the collective resources you have. So that is effectively, have we missed anything, I feel like Emily? that's the full tour. You got that, everything here in Marrakesh. <laughs> that is the full tour. We do have another video, that if it's not up on the channel already, it will be very soon, that is a round one playthrough. So you can take what you've learned here you can take that playthrough, which I did with Alicia, and kind of combine the two and really get a thorough understanding for this game before it comes out. This game, as you may know, this was already crowdfunded. It will be delivering, I think, sometime still this year. Nice. I do also believe there is a retail edition of this game on its way from Queen Games. Cool. Definitely take a look for this, and we will probably have a full review for it sometime closer to when the game comes out. We do want to get more plays of it in, but as you can probably tell. We're very excited. We're pretty enthusiastic <laughs> about this one. It does a lot of this, the things that we all like about games. There's a lot of really, really satisfying turns. And I have to say, if the idea of putting uh, Keshi in this tower and not knowing exactly what's gonna come out or not turns you off, give it a chance. Because it's so fun. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. It adds a lot of excitement to every round because there's been times where we knew there were three Keshi in the tower. Right. And you're just we dropped in six out. more. That's a total of nine if you're not doing the math. And two came out. <laughs> so that was a what felt like at first, like, oh, we're not going to get a lot of Keshi. But you're still activating your, your yeah. assistance. And if it's early game, you're probably adding Keshi. But if it's late game, you've probably already got a lot of Keshi yeah. on the board. So you're having some satisfying turns. But oh boy, satisfying is that next round <laughs> when you put in six more Keshi and so many probably yes. come pouring out because then you're collecting all sorts of Keshi and doing all sorts of things. Anyway, 
if you have any questions at all about af about this game after this incredibly thorough tour of it, <laughs> please make them in the comments below and we will try to answer absolutely everything we can. Until next time though, make sure everyone has fun at the table and we'll see you then.